In addition to using 3D models in MO2, we can also incorporate SVG files to extrude our own logos or graphics. In this lesson, let's take a look at creating SVGs in Inkscape for MO2. Once you've opened Inkscape, I'll navigate to File, and I'll import my image or logo. In this case, I have a rasterized PNG of a logo I want to bring in. I'll select it and choose Open. Once in my scene, I'll place it on my canvas. We'll select it and choose Path. From our Path dropdown, I'll choose Trace Bitmap. Our Trace Bitmap will give us several different options. Notice we can specify our brightness, edge, or color quantization. In this case, I'll choose my brightness. Using the live preview, I can see exactly how it's going to trace my image. Notice by raising or dropping my threshold can change the curves of the path selection. I like to preserve as much detail as possible. So I'll choose a point 1. I'll click OK. And I'll close my Trace Bitmap dialog box. It may not look like it, but now we have paths of our logo. Using my selection tool, I can now see I have two different copies of my logo. So how do I know which one has my paths? Clicking the Edit Paths button, I can see that only one of these items actually contains paths. Let's remove this PNG. Choosing my selection tool, I'll select it and delete. Let's move this back onto the canvas. I'll click back on my Edit Path tool and review the paths that it's created. In situations like this, I may want to clean up some of these paths. Once I'm happy with the result, I'll click File and Save As. I've named this Inkscape Logo.svg and I'll save it. In our second example, we have a logo here with both gradients and shadows that might make things a bit more difficult. To get started, let's turn on our layers. I'll navigate to Layer and activate my layer panel. Let's review this layer just to make sure that we've got the right item. Clicking the eye icon, we'll turn our layer on and off. Just like before, let's try and trace this image. I'll navigate to Path and click on Trace Bitmap. To see our results as we're changing our parameters, I'll click Live Preview. We have three different parameters we can adjust to try and get a better path. Clicking Edge Detection will try to highlight the edges it can find. Let's try reducing the number of colors in our image by using the color quantization. In some cases, working with color quantization may not be ideal. We may want to adjust our brightness cutoff. I'll change this to 0.8, and that's giving me a pretty good result. I'll click OK to confirm my selection. But now I have both a vector image based on paths and my original image underneath. I can still see my shadows underneath this path. Let's move this to the side. I can see my original logo and then my path. Let's just undo that. Just like before, I'll click the Edit Paths tool to investigate the different paths and anchors created by Inkscape. To remove excess points, let's select them and delete them using the backspace key. Notice that clicking on any of our anchors will reveal the Bezier handles. We can use these to adjust the angles of our different paths. When creating paths by tracing bitmaps, we may want to simplify our paths. By navigating to Path, Simplify, it will reduce the number of points created with Image Trace. Note, however, that simplifying our paths may be too extreme. In situations like this, I'll choose to undo and stick with the original paths created by Inkscape. When creating SVGs for MO2, please make note of the best practices. 
Keep path simple. Having many paths may make it challenging to work with in MO2. Logos and items with solid colors will work better than those with gradients or shadows. Be sure to use paths. To extrude properly, you must have vector paths. Do not overlap vertices. These points should be merged together or removed completely or moved away from each other. Let's move on to Final Cut and import our original logo into MO2. I'm inside Final Cut Pro 10 and I've loaded MO2 in my timeline. With MO2 selected, I'll move to Add Item. I'll click Add Item and navigate to the 3D text SVG. Clicking on SVG, I can see my original rasterized logo and the Inkscape SVG logo that we just created. I'll choose this to bring it into my scene. This will load the SVG preview. I'll review my item. Highlighting over my different areas will show me what exactly is being selected. Depending on the suite you use, you may have additional paths. I can highlight over my different areas, and I can see that these paths are used to cut out from that section. Clicking on one of these will fill those gaps. Let's load this into our scene. I'll click load to bring it into the canvas. That's looking nice, but it's missing those internal pieces that I'd really like. Let's use that same SVG to load these items. I'll click on add item again, 3D text SVG, and choose SVG once more. We'll load the same logo and click choose. This time, let's open up these paths. I'm going to choose to not use this outer path and instead select these items. Whatever is highlighted in white will be extruded by MO2. Let's load this into our canvas. Now that we have this loaded in our canvas, let's add some materials and textures. Clicking on the different items in my scene content, I can see which items are which. For these internal items, let's add a material. I'll click my material button and I'll choose a material from the library. I think I'll go with this aluminum. Clicking it will place it onto that item. Clicking OK will close the material library. Moving back to our scene content, I'll click on this other SVG. This is the outside of our logo. SVGs work much like text. And by twirling down our disclosure triangle, I can see there is a face, a bevel, and a body that can accept materials. In addition to materials for each one of these different items, we can also apply a style to the entire SVG. I'll move down to the style library and click it to open it. I have a favorite selected. Clicking it will apply it to that SVG. Clicking OK will close that style library. As we can see, three different materials have been placed onto my SVG. On the inner extrusion, I only have a single material that is across the entire extrusion. And that is an easy, quick way to create your own custom logos and extrusions with MO2. For more information about Motion VFX and MO2, please visit www.motionvfx.com. Again, my name is Stanislaw Robert Liberta with Motion VFX, and I'll see you next time.